Hey there folks, my name is Adrian with Project Ramos and on this channel I provide tech reviews. So if you're passionate about tech or just curious about tech, consider subscribing. One of the biggest problems that USB Type-C has brought to the market is the fact that it's very confusing. There are cables that are charging only, uh, cables that can do charging and data, but not fast data, just regular speed data, and then also fast data. And then there's cables that can do video transmission, all using the same exact USB Type-C connector. And to make things a little more complicated, uh, the quality of the cable also matters. And if you go on Amazon or any similar site and do a search for USB Type-C cables, you're going to see a ton of results and they all will claim that they are the best that is out there. When in fact, some cables are very good quality cables and others, not so much. Now you might be thinking, well, I'll just look at the reviews and the ones that have the most positive reviews are the good ones. Or you might be looking at price. The more expensive ones are the better ones, but that doesn't always tell the full story. In this series, I'm going to be reviewing all of the USB type C cables that I can get my hands on and continue to build on that database. I built a test rig to be able to specifically check the resistance of each USB type C cable to see if it meets the minimum requirements of the USB IF. And if you're wondering what the USB IF is, it stands for Universal Serial Bus Implementers Forum. Now I'm going to read right off of uh, Google here uh, just to give you a quick description of what this organization is and what they do. The organization that governs the USB standards. Introduced in 1995, the USB IF provides vendor certification for USB interfaces, including ports and cables. The USB IF holds the trademarks for USB Type C and USB C, the latest USB connector and cable type. So basically, all this means is that this organization has set out standards to be able to uh, give manufacturers a guideline to go by to make sure that their cables are going to be uh, safe for use out in the market. And not every cable passes the USB IF requirements, nor do they claim to meet those requirements. But what that means to you, uh, the user, is that a cable that doesn't meet the requirements could be harmful to whichever uh, device you're plugging it into, whether it be a smartphone or a laptop or any sensitive, expensive equipment you might be using a cable, a USB Type-C cable with. Now, the type of issues you could be running into is if the cable doesn't meet certain requirements that I'll cover in my reviews, what could happen is if you're expecting uh, your device to be able to charge as fast as it can, let's say 100 watts, but the cable that you're using doesn't meet those requirements, then your device is not going to charge at that peak level. It's going to charge much slower, and that is because of the cable. And also other things that can happen is data integrity. If it's not able to uh, have the electrical requirements that the USB IF has defined, then sometimes the data being put through the cable can slow down. And lastly, one of the things that can happen is your cable could heat up, which over time, it's going to shorten the life of your cable. Next, I'm going to show you a demonstration of the test rig that I put together to be able to confirm if a USB type C cable is meeting the requirements of the USB IF. All right, so here is my test rig. What this rig does is it checks for resistance of whatever cable that you're testing. You plug it in on this end, then it runs a uh, one amp current through the cable and it measures what the voltage drop is. And with that information, we can confirm if the cable does meet USB IF requirements. One of the requirements for a cable that charges at 100 watts or more is that it has to have an e marker chip. And that's where this little guy comes in. This is capable of reading the e marker chip and giving us the information that is on there. Now, the first cable that we're going to 
test out here is this Cal Digit USB Type C cable. It does data. It's a Thunderbolt 4 cable and it also does uh, high speed charging. So let's go ahead and check the E marker chip on this cable. The E marker chip shows that it's a Thunderbolt 4 USB 4 Gen 3 and it's also capable of charging at 20 volts. 5 amps which means 100 watts so now that's where this test rig is going to come in to see if it is capable of charging up to 100 watts on this tester i have a script loaded that will automatically check the voltage drops so we know what the resistance is and it'll give us the results if the cable is capable of charging up to 100 watts so let's go ahead and get this started up here so we're now injecting one amp of current through the cable and we're going to start up the script here. And here are the results. It can definitely charge at 100 watts. So what that means is that this cable passes the USB IF resistance requirements. Now, what you're probably familiar with is the fact that Amazon is full of these USB type C cables that are manufactured in China. They're brands that are not really known out here. Now, this one in particular shows that it can charge up to 240 watts and it's 40 gigabits per second. So Thunderbolt 4 USB 4 capable. So let's go ahead and check and see what the e marker chip shows. The e marker chip shows that it can do 240 watt charging Thunderbolt 4 four and USB four gen three data transfer. So now let's go ahead and check the resistance to confirm if indeed it can handle up to 240 Watts. It passes the resistance test, which means that this cable is safe to use to charge up to 240 Watts. I showed you two cables that pass the resistance test. Now let's get into some cables that don't exactly measure up to what they claim to be. Here's another Chinese brand cable. This one shows that it can do the 40 gigabits per second. And it also shows that it can charge up to 120 Watts. So first let's check the e marker chip and the e marker chip shows that it can actually do 240 watt charging and it's a USB 4 gen 3 data cable. So everything so far looks promising there. Now let's check the resistance test and see what that tells us. And here are the results. The resistance is too high for it to be safe to use as a 100 watt or even a 240 watt charging cable. At 60 watts, it's safe, but anything above that, it is not. Now here's another Chinese branded cable, USB type C to USB type C. This one's marketed as being a charging cable up to 100 watts. So let's see what the e-marker chip shows. The e-marker chip shows that it can do 20 volts, 5 amp charging, which is 100 watts. And the data, it can do USB 3.2 and USB 4 Gen 2, which is 10 gigabits and 20 gigabits per second, respectively. Now let's go ahead and wire this up into our test rig. And let's see what we get. This cable is safe to use up to 60 watts, but at 100 watts, it's not safe to use. Having the ability to test a USB cable for resistance reveals some very interesting information. As a matter of fact, that information is not readily available out there. And it's a critical piece of information to make sure that you're choosing the right cable to be able to use with your devices. The risk becomes higher as the device that you're plugging these USB cables into is more expensive. Using this cable as an example, it wasn't able to pass the 100 watt charging resistance test, but this cable is perfectly fine for 60 watts, which means that charging an iPad is perfectly fine with this cable, but charging a laptop, no, this would not work for that. This is the type of information that I'm going to be covering in my review in this series of USB type C cables. So don't forget to subscribe that way you get notified when I do upload a new video. And in this series, I'm going to cover as many USB cables as I can possibly get my hands on.